God is the God of hope. He's a God of restoration. And his arms are open wide for you to experience all that he is today. If God did it then, our God can do it again now. You may think it's over. Others may say it's over. But with our lives in God's hands, it is not over. The love of Jesus liberates our souls, steadies our feet, and gives us a hope that can never be taken away. Good morning, everybody. <gasps> Three of you said good morning. Vic, thank you for that. Mm. Everybody, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to church this morning. Those of you that are joining us online, welcome. Tell you what, let's pray together. Lord, we recognize that your presence is here. You said where a couple of people or more got together, your presence is with them. And so we welcome and acknowledge your presence. We ask that you would speak to us heal us, strengthen and encourage us. But we also want to encourage you. We want to focus on you. We recognize that time of worship isn't about us or even about feeling better. It's about you, about lifting up your name, about glorifying you. And so just like that old song, we turn our eyes on Jesus look at you and worship and glorify you. In Jesus' name, can you join me and say amen? Amen. Let's sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise, I raise a hallelujah. sing in the middle of the storm and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm
this morning to God. You don't have to, but you're certainly welcome to give it a shot. It's a beautiful way to surrender. Let's sing. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. Yeah. When all I see is the you see a mountain moves. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Oh, yeah. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. So Nothing can stand. 
have stuff going on in our lives, heavy stuff, some of us, and it has a tendency to build up on our shoulders and in our hands. And Sometimes it's just spilling out of what our hands can even hold. I want to invite you to use your imagination, just all the stuff that's going on in your life, all the stuff in your hands, all the stuff on your shoulders, the stuff that's on your heart, the stuff that's weighing on your mind. And this is just a beautiful opportunity as worship to offer that stuff to Jesus. Just say, hey, Lord, I'm, I'm giving this stuff to you. And some, for some things, it's easy just to kind of offload that to Jesus. Like, hey, can you just take this for me? But there, I want to give you another idea that maybe you can invite Jesus into it. Because in some cases, you still need to hold that thing. There's a responsibility that you have, but you just need Jesus to show up and get in the mix there. So you don't have to do this, but I want to invite you to give it a shot. Just kind of open up your hands like this. Imagine those things that are on in your hands, sometimes spilling out over your hands. You can't keep a track or keep hold of everything. The thing that is weighing on your mind or on your heart. We're going to sing this, Almighty Fortress. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you in every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You're the almighty fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Ooh, so when I fight. So when I fight. Fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh, oh God, the battle belongs. We believe that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's hope, and there's healing. Thank you, Lord. Have your way this morning.
There's hope in fullness of joy. Come on. There's freedom here in your presence. It's in your presence. It's in your declare. There's freedom here in your presence. I'm trading sorrow for joy. There's freedom here in your presence. It's in your presence. It's in your presence. There's freedom.
Spirit of the Lord is Sing it out. Everything is changing now. Everything is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Miracles are breaking now. Your presence is among us now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the You know, we, we serve a God who, when we begin to worship Him and when we begin to turn our faces and hearts towards Him, He meets us with His presence. And many times we pray that God would break through in a situation, He break through to change something. But also the presence of God Yes, he does that. But many times he comes and he transforms our hearts, our perspective, that which we are carrying the burden of, he meets us and he transforms us and he changes us. You see this in the life of David where many times David, would, God would move on a, on a situation, but many times you would see God move on the heart of David and change his heart and heal his heart and bring deliverance to his heart. And listen, we live in a spiritual world. If, if, if we are not aware of that, we're not gonna see things clearly. We live in a spiritual world. There are forces that are against you because one, you bear the image of God and two, because the enemy wants to keep you underneath a, a, a lid that keeps you from operating in who you are. And friends, I, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks through our patterns, that breaks through our emotions, that breaks through our ways of thinking, that breaks through how we see the world. He breaks through and brings deliverance to our spirit and our heart and can set us free, amen? What many of us need is not God to change the situation. What we need is deliverance and freedom and joy and peace and life and, and for the chains of addiction, the chains of our view to be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and I wonder today how many of us in this room that you feel like there is a, a, a spiritual, I was trying to think of it earlier, but there's a spiritual lid on your life. There's a spiritual numbness on your life. You don't know why. You don't know why you keep falling into the same patterns. You don't know why you keep having some of the same emotions and, and reactions and the, the flesh and you go, ah, why? And if that's you today, if you want the Holy Spirit to remove that lid and for you to have freedom in your spirit and your mind and in your spirit, man, that you could step into freedom step into freedom everybody say freedom and let me tell you something today you cannot do it yourself you can't bring spiritual freedom in your life because you are you are in need of the spirit to do it on your behalf so I, I'm, I'm just gonna ask you today if you feel like that there is a spiritual lid on your spiritual life, or you're going through a season where you just sense that, man, I just, some, I, there's just a disconnect. I just, I'm not able to step into where I wanna be. If that's you today, I'm gonna ask you just to raise your hand, just right, right where you are. 
All right, that's all of us. That's, that's most of us. Keep that hand raised. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come in right now and bring freedom to your mind, freedom to your heart, freedom to your emotions. What we need is the Spirit to come in and change us, to transform our hearts. And so we're gonna, we're gonna sing this, this course one more time. And I want you to begin to pray, begin to ask the Spirit, come in, Lord. I just, we invite you, Holy Spirit, come in, come in. Come in and change us and transform us and bring the freedom and the power of your spirit that meets us right now, God. I bind every demonic work in the name of Jesus, every spirit of darkness, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. I curse you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Lord, may your freedom come in this house right now. Come on, church, let's just seek him together. Oh, God, won't you come and minister to us today? Oh, yes, God. this attitude of wanting the freedom of the Lord. Um, I don't know if you remember the story in the Bible where Jesus gets in a boat and he crosses the Sea of Galilee and he lands in, a, in an area that there was a, a man who is bound by demons. And this man has been tormented. This man has been cutting himself. This man was absolutely tormented by the possession of these demons. And Jesus cast out these demons. And this is what the demon says, the legion of demons says, do not cast us out. Please don't cast us out of this area. Everybody say area. And the reality is there are, there are spiritual strongholds in areas, in, in lands, in borders, and it just is. You can cross from one nation into another and it feels like, I, I just crossed the border, but things feel different. You ever walked into a place and went like, something feels different. It's kind of strange and, and it's an uncleanness. And the reality is we live in a, in a state that there is darkness. There are demonic strongholds in the state of Colorado. There are demonic strongholds in our city. There are demonic strongholds. Listen, it's not a coincidence that we're, we're, like, we're almost number one in alcoholism. It's not a coincidence that we have the most liberal abortion laws in the nation. That's not like, oh, that was an accident. No, that was a result of a spiritual stronghold on this land that has produced its fruit of ungodliness and evil. And I, I want to encourage us this morning to understand that in the authority of Jesus Christ, we can take authority 
over the land in which we dwell. There are, there are regions where there are certain things that seem to be common. There are even churches that certain sins to be rampant. But when the people of God take authority over land, borders, their household, as they walk down the street, they understand where the soles of my feet walk. I am taking authority over because of the one who lives in me. When we begin to do that, things begin to change. So, I refuse to allow our city and our state to be dominated by evil and the spirits of evil. I, 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 I refuse it. So it's much like this, not on my watch. And when I think about, there's even spiritual blindness. You read in Corinthians, there, and then we're gonna pray and I'll stop preaching. But there's this, this, uh, there's this passage in Corinthians that talks about that the enemy has put blinders on those who don't know Jesus. So they don't receive the gospel. Well, the church is called to pray for those blinders to be removed. And the gospel of Jesus Christ could pierce the hearts of those around us. There, there is, you, we will not fix our, our state or our nation with, the, with changing laws. Do they need to change? Absolutely. And we should, we should stand for righteousness. So don't hear what I'm not saying. You can't fix a spiritual problem with a physical solution. So we as a church though, have to do all these things in the spirit. And so I'm just gonna ask us this morning, and this is a little random, but uh, Alja and Nancy have inspired me about their, their, their call on God to tear down the strongholds of the Aka people, which you're gonna hear about in just a moment. But what if, what if the church actually believed it was their responsibility to pray that the strongholds of the land in which we dwell are broken in the name of Jesus. This, this, this land right now belongs to Jesus. It's being used as a, as a, it's being used as an altar before the Lord Jesus Christ because we're here. And I, I want us to take a moment. I want us to pray together as the church over the land in which we dwell. I'm just not talking about our church. I'm talking about wherever you go and your business in Old Town Arvada, wherever you go, you understand this land belongs to the Lord and no works of the devil are gonna be prospering here because I'm here and the spirit of Christ is in, is in me. Amen? So if we can, let's take hold of the person next to you, grab their hand, stand up tall, people of God, reach across the aisle. We're, we're just gonna get crazy. We're gonna, we're just get, we're gonna step out of our seat. Oh, <laughs> scary. And we're gonna pray for the release of every stronghold on, on the people that dwell in this land. Because God loves them. And he put us here to pray for them. So Father, in the name of Jesus, this land belongs to you. And so Lord, together as your church this morning, we come against every demonic power and spirit that has worked its agenda in the land in which we dwell. We take authority over the spirit of perversion, over the spirit of murder, over the spirit of mental illness, over the spirit of addiction, over the spirit of anger and violence. 
We take authority in the name of Jesus over the blinders that are on the eyes of those who don't know you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you that you would remove them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for prodigal sons and daughters of this house that they, the blinders would fall off their eyes right now, that the conviction of the Holy Spirit would fall on them and they would come back into the Father's household, that they would be made whole, they would be made right. Lord, today we pray for the youth culture of this land, that in the name of Jesus, they will not be seduced by what they see anymore in Jesus' name, what they hear, what they entertain themselves with, that God, you would raise up a spirit that would that would protect them, that would keep them, that our teenagers, that our middle schoolers, that our, that our, um, our grade schoolers, right now in the name of Jesus, that the lid on their spiritual life would be lifted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the marriages in this, in the land in which we dwell. We come against the spirit of divorce. We come against the spirit of, of loneliness. We come against the spirit of suicide. We come against the spirit, God, that is anti you. And so God, as your church today, we claim this land belongs to you. This land belongs to you. God, I pray for the households in this, in this church that they would declare today, my house belongs to you. And so Lord, we break every spiritual darkness. God, may you set us free from all influences that lead us into patterns of evil. Lord, we want our state to be transformed and changed. But Lord, I recognize today that the state of the church in Colorado has been seduced by a spirit of darkness. And so Lord, we pray today as your church that your bride and your people will be liberated. They will be set free that you would expose every demonic agenda and teaching, every seduction would be broken and it would be laid bare before all to see so that the truth of your church would stand tall and strong and be lights in the midst of darkness. That God, I come against the spirit of fear in our pulpits that keep pastors from preaching the word. I come against the spirit, God, of man pleasing that keeps them to draw a crowd instead of make disciples. God, I ask you that you would release the church in this city and in this state to see a revival in us first. And so God, release it to us today. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your joy. And thank you, God, that you've heard our prayers and you're going to continue to move and to work. And we thank you for the opportunity to partner with you this morning. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a hand today. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, listen, listen, if we're gonna be a church, we, let's be a church, amen? Uh, if, if, we're, if we're gonna call ourselves Christians, then let's talk about the things the Bible says, and let's take a moment and bind the work of the enemy in our lives. Come on, that's church. That's just church, that's what we do. Amen, amen. Well, good morning to all of you. I'm so excited for today. Our, um, our, our family members from Thailand are here. They're gonna be sharing in just a moment. But I wanna take a moment and pray over the offerings that we give. And listen, if you've never given as worship unto the Lord, I wanna encourage you to do that. God is faithful to his word. And as we give, it breaks the back of, of materialism. It breaks the back of selfishness. And we become, it's an act that crucifies our flesh. And then we get to worship God with our finances. And then God in his word promises that he will meet us and bless us and move in our lives as we take that step of faith. I, this isn't about money. So don't hear what I'm not saying. This is about worship and this is about obedience. I would not be a good pastor if I did not tell you the scripture of what it says about our giving to the local church that God's put us in. So I wanna pray for all of you today who, are, who have given that God's hand of blessing will be on your life. But I wanna remind you that God will honor his word. God's not a liar. And if God doesn't honor his word, then let's not serve him. 
That's a shocking statement, and it feels weird every time I say it. But God says, test me, and I'll show you. God says, I am faithful when you're faithless. God's the God that has always come through. And if you've never given, let me encourage you to take that step of faith today. So I'm going to pray over our giving, whether you give online or by text, or you can give in the boxes around the room. Let me encourage you, worship God with your whole life, and he will honor that worship and meet you right where you are. Amen. Hold your hands out as representing what you give the Lord. Father, this is our worship to you. It's part of it. It's not the only thing we give, but it is our worship. And so Lord, I pray that you bless all finances that are given to the church that you've set us in and called us to be a part. That's what your word says. And so Lord, as we give our tithe and our offering, God, I just ask you that you would bless your people. You will release your blessing fresh and new. And God, that your blessing would be on our church as we worship you through this church that you are the head of, you're the chief shepherd. I am an under shepherd. I, I, we are stewards of what you're doing. And so Lord, we want to honor you fully with our lives, our homes, and our finances. Bless what we give you this week. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen. We're just gonna take a few moments and, and worship and then we'll get right at it. Everything is changing now. Everything is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Miracles are breaking out. Your presence is among us now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is Sing it out. And everything is changing now. Everything is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Miracles are great. Presence is among us now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord. Sing it again. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. Just let your voice. Everything is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And miracles are breaking. of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go ahead and hug your neck. Say hi to someone and then you can have a seat. Welcome a couple who has been serving on the mission field for many, many, many years, over 30 years. Um, Nancy was sent out from us uh, many, many years ago in the 80s, and she met a man and they, who was born in China, who was part of an Aka tribe, and they decided that they believed in the Great Commission, and they believed that God wanted them to reach the Aka 
people. You're going to be so blessed today as they've planted over, uh, I think, 28 churches, going to plant five more this year. They have a children's home that works with, with children and gives them an education. They have a Bible school and college that they graduate pastors and send them out to plant churches. They're a part of serving their local city as well as the villages up in the mountains. They've, God has used them to take villages that were controlled by the, by the drug trade and they, and they grew poppies for opium and all that kind of stuff. And now these villages have been saved. The church has been planted and they grow coffee now instead of opium. This is a big deal. It's a big deal. And so God is using them in five nations that surround them in Vietnam and China and Burma and Laos and in Thailand. And so I'll stop talking because these folks are my heroes. Can we welcome our church family with us, Ajay and Nancy? Love you guys. Bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ajay, and this is my beautiful wife, Nancy. And we are so glad to be home at Faith. Faith sent me out as a single over 30 years ago as a fisher of man, and I caught a well of a fish. <laughs> And it's always such a joy. Um, when we come in and we sit under the worship and we sit under the anointing that's in this house, it just, this is our roots. This is where we started. Um, it's just very exciting. And we thank you, Pastor Jason and Cheryl, for your leadership. Thank you so much for having us. As we come from uh, Thailand, that two words come to mind, thinking of Pastor Jason and uh, Pastor Mark came to visit us, to rejoice with us, uh, to celebrate uh, the graduation. And the two words that come to me for faith is that freedom, that's greater freedom, and fruitfulness. There'll be fruitfulness, even more abundant fruitfulness. Freedom and fruitfulness to faith church in Jesus name and this morning we are so happy to be here and to share to be a part of that journey to the cross and so last week Pastor Jason shared on uh, food washing and the two principles that really touched my heart no one is too high to serve that's the mind of Christ he's God and he's unrobed his godness to become man and to serve us. And there's no one too low that we should serve. So that's a great principle. This morning, we will talk about the significance of communion. And we are not preaching or we are not teaching. We just use that outline of what the communion mean and to share the story that God is blessing us. You all make it possible for us to be there. And we, this morning, we want to, you to join us to celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of God. So I will have my wife to read uh, Matthew and Corinthians that are talking about the communion. Matthew 26, 26 through 29. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it up to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when, we, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. There are five acts of worship. Preaching, praying, singing, giving, and partaking the communion. And I believe that uh, communion is the highest and central, central form of worship because it touches all five senses, sight, 
smell, sounds, touch, and taste. What a form of worship. And which, so this is a form that we worship the Lord. It'll be at next, maybe next time as you partake the bread and the cup, remember that this is a time of remembering and reflecting. There are four aspects that I want, we want to share this morning and that will envelop the uh, ministry that we want to share this morning. The first aspect is that uh, communion compels us to look backward and being grateful to what Jesus has done for us on the cross. And his body is broken and his blood was shed. The body is broken so that the body of Christ, people of Christ, will have the unity. The blood of Jesus Christ has been shed from the head, from the thorn crown. Therefore, our thinking is washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood has been shed from the back because of the whips, and he do away with the burden that we carry. He did away with the burden that we are carrying. His blood has been shed from his hands to equip, to qualify, to clean our hands to serve him. His feet shed blood that we will walk righteously. His side was pierced and the blood came out and his blood wash our hearts, that we, our hearts will be right with him. Looking back, grateful to him, his blood not only have the power of forgiveness, but also have the power for healing any sickness we have. This morning, the blood of Jesus Christ have the power to break the chain of the enemy and healing is be ready for us. If we only receive that, we will have the healing, not only forgiveness, but healing on our bodies. And we're thinking of looking back, my life, our lives, the Akka peoples, you can see the enemy came to steal, kill, destroy. But thank you, Jesus. You came to give life. Life to abundant. As we look back at where the Akka were um, many years ago, the Akka are an animistic tribe. Uh, they worship the sun, the moon. They live in constant fear. They're constantly trying to appease the spirits, and they live in fear of making the spirits angry. But they never know what makes the spirits angry, and they're constantly making sacrifices uh, to the spirits in order to try to find some kind of peace and some kind of hope. Um, this picture here that you see, that's actually Ajay's family. Ajay was born in China, in southern China, and when he was just a few months old, um, his, his whole tribe, well, his whole village decided they were going to escape out of, out of southern China into northern Burma. And um, there was two reasons. One, the communism in the country, and they were using a lot of the tribal people as slave labor. And they also heard that there was a great sickness. And they didn't know what the great sickness was, but if they escaped, maybe the sickness wouldn't arrive. So they started walking. It's an eight to 10 hours a day carrying everything you own on your back with animals. And there was hundreds of them as they escaped out of China. But as they were going, this was a three to four month journey, the great sickness caught up with them. Ajay believes it was the toxic smallpox, but we're not absolutely sure. And the children started dying. There was no medicine at all. The fevers were very, very high, and the children kept dying and dying. Ajay was several months old, and he was tied to his mother's back. 
And his mother was getting slower and slower because he cried all the time. And she was at the back of the caravan. And the elders and the leaders were getting more and more frustrated with her because she was the last one in every day. And they said, that baby is going to die. All the other babies died. You have other children. Hang the baby in a tree or put it in the cleft of a rock because you've got to stay up with us or you're going to die as well. But she wouldn't. She wouldn't abandon him, and she continued to press forward. Only two children under the age of eight lived through the great sickness. It was Ajay and another young man. The other young man had brain damage from the high fever. We saw God's hand on Ajay's life from a very young age. And even though he, his tribe lived in constant fear and was constantly making sacrifices to appease the spirit, the Lord preserved Ajay for his, his people, the Akka people. As you think of communion, it's a time to look back and grateful to God and how He is good to us. Um, our ministry, we have a children's home. We take children of high risk, and they're all coming from very dark backgrounds. Their, their fathers are normally, their fathers and mothers are either in prison or opium addicts. They have stepfathers that are abusing them. They have uh, grandmothers that are opium addicts. And so we um, take them in and we start with the children and give them an education and we give them a hope. They come in hopeless. Huh? But over time, we see that as they accept the Lord, we, they turn into worshipers. We see the blood of Jesus wash away the, the pain from their past. And then these children became, become agents of change for their village. And we're able then to reach out to their families and begin to transform their families as well. It's a great joy to be able to set our children um, into families. Um, we have a wonderful uh, facility where our children leave, live and our full-time Bible students, and it's truly a family. Uh, and we get to, we celebrate Christmas together, Mother's Days, Father's Days, and it's a joy to see the transformation and raise up these agents of change and send them out into the dark areas. Communion is a time not only to look backward and see what Christ has done for us and how He changed our life, how He has been good to us, but it's a time that uh, compels us to look inward for self-examination, to be right with God. You know, Jesus at the first uh, communion, the Last Supper, the Lord, uh, the Last Supper, uh, Jesus said, one of you, you betray me. And they look at each other and ask Jesus, it, is it me? Is me? It's a time of each one examine. Am I right with God? Is anything we have in our life that is not right with God? It's a time to say, what flaws in my life, Lord, that I need to do right with you? In uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 28, say, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. And if we found any flaw, any sin in our life, 1 John 1, 9 said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We not only have the children's home, have 75 orphans living with us, we also have Bible school. And Bible school is a place where we accept kind of, uh, re human reject uh, drugs addict to come with us and help them to see where they are at and 
where God wants them to be. And so we have many Bible school uh, programs to see life-changing, transforming life as they emit. You know, this is a place where you are willing to humble yourself and admit your wrong and be right with God. It's one of our greatest joys is our Bible school um, because we, we take them in. As Ajay said, many of them are drug addicts. Uh, many of them have never had any education at all. Many of them can't read or write. And we are able to help them learn to read and write. And we watch their lives be transformed. It was very interesting when we started our Bible school. We started out with a lot of the pastors who had never been to Bible school, but they were leading their churches, and we watch them grow, and their wives watch the transformation, and their children, and then their wives and children started coming to Bible school, and we started to see this transformation happening, and oh, what a joy. But the greatest joy is when they can read and write, when they, are, they believe in themselves, they see what God created them to be, is graduation day. Uh, graduation day is is my favorite day of the year. They get their dignity back. Everything that Satan stole from them, they get it back. They're wearing black robes, they're being honored, their families are coming and presenting flowers to them, and it's just been a joy over the years to see each graduating class. This past year, we had 109 graduates. We've never had that many from, um, uh, thank you from six different programs. Um, so we have our monthly training, we have our full-time training, um, and we have a bachelor's program that graduated this year, and those that started studying in the villages. Once you get a certain level, you can start a Bible school in the village. And to see each one of them with so, so much pride uh, complete their studies after three to four years and, um, and finish, and their family rejoice with them. It was a, a great joy to have Pastor Jason and Mark in with us this last year. <clears throat> yes, the communion, the word communion in Thai, we translate it as the great intimacy, the great intimate time with God. To do that, you have to be right with God. To be right with God, look backward what Jesus have done for us. Look inward to check our hearts. And then after that, only after that, we are able to look outward, outward to share the gospel, to share who Jesus is. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Apostle Paul says, For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we know who we are, we are children of God. As we know our identity in Christ, Amen. you know, I, I believe that 99% uh, of the problem of Christian is not knowing who they are in Christ. The strong Christian is the one who know who they are in Christ. In 1 Peter 2.9 said, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special procession, that you may declare the presence of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Hallelujah. So we are children of God. And what a privilege, what a blessing to be a child of God. And he does away with the shame, the filthiness, the sickness, the filthy background. He break the chain of the enemy. We are free. So this pro proclamation, declaration, I, I, I think we, we, we do four directions. Upward to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that accept me as your child. I'm a child of God. I, my fear is gone. I'm your child. 
that's uh, the first upward. And downward to enemy, to Satan, said, Satan, I have no fear over you. You have no part to do anything to do with me. I break relationship. I cancel any curse, uh, anything that you put on me. Break that relationship. And to the church, to believers, to the church said, friend, I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm member of this body. I want to be a part to serve with you, to come alongside. Is there anything I can do to serve? I want to be a part of this body of Christ, the church of God. And then that's the right hand side. The left hand side tell the world, come, test Jesus. He is delicious. He is good. He is good. He is delicious. Come, test and see. He is good. He is good. He is able to help. This is a, a, a place where you cannot contain the goodness of God in yourself, but you want to go out to share, to let other people know that God is good. So we have a ministry of outreach, especially church planting. I believe that church is the answer to the world. Yes, we do foundation, organization, those things are good. But Jesus didn't come to establish those things. But he came to establish the church of God. And the, so faith church, go forward for the glory of God. Do the church well. You are doing well. You are serving locally so beautifully. And you are serving globally so faithfully. So thank you for your part of church planting all over the world. And you are making it for us to be possible to be there to serve among the Aka. There are churches happening among uh, the five nations where the Aka people live. Church planting is happening. And this year we plan to plant at least five churches by the power of the Holy Spirit. Church planning has been another wonderful joy of ours. It hasn't been an easy one because a lot of them, they decide to walk the Jesus road, but then when they get sick or they have hard times, they run back to the shaman or they run back to the village uh, witch and, and do ceremonies. And, and some of them jump for a while and um, to try to transform them inwardly and to not walk in fear and to stand in peace. There was so much in Infirmity among the Akka, and we've just seen the Lord um, just break off infirmity, break off infirmity. We're seeing the church rising up to be the bride of Christ, and it's been beautiful. We have we we currently have 28 churches um, under our leadership, and we it's a great joy with our pastors. Um, uh, this is one of our largest churches. It's from a Jay's home village. It's Doi Chang up on the top there. The pastor was an orphan. He had never been to school. And um, he came to our Bible school and he learned to read and write. And he went through all the different programs and he graduated with his bachelor's degree. And um, he has now close to 700 people in his church and he's leading his church. And he's also planted two other churches as well. Um, if you go back one, uh, the, the, the young man down in the corner um, is one of his disciples that he led uh, to the Lord. He discipled him. It's actually a Jay's cousin. And he went out and planted a church among some of the most downrotted people. Um, actually, a Jay was heading up to the main church with Pastor Russ Fraze, and a man ran out on the road and stopped the truck and said, hey, 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 we want to become Christian. We had taken his son in many years earlier. He was an opium addict. He was a drug addict. He had come to the end of it, and he had talked to several men in that village and said, Let's do it. Let's walk the Jesus road. And the dean, uh, Pastor Russ Fraze, got so excited, as he did, and says, let's buy land to build a church. I still remember the day Ajay took me to see the land. 
I didn't think they really bought land. <laughs> the, the incline, I thought they bought air, mostly air. <laughs> but they built this church they, on stilts, and this church is the most thriving church, and they see miracles almost every week in this church. And it's just beautiful to see how God's transformed them. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Faith Church have been known as missional church. I believe communion is a missional worship act, and it's a war room activity, war room worship, because it's a time to thinking of looking back, grateful to Jesus, look inward to check ourselves if who know who we are, and ready look outward for outreach, for mission. And I thank you for your involvement in a global mission. Please continue to pray, to give, go visit, come visit. You have open invitation to come visit Aka Outreach, to touch the orphan to teach the Bible students to do outreach among churches. So, and fourthly, send people to us. Fifthly, we pray that there will be missionary from faith come and add to, uh, addition to uh, what we are doing. Amen. Please continue to pray, to give, to come visit, and to send people out, and we are uh, expecting, we are looking forward to see a missionary come out from our faith church uh, that add to our, our uh, activity that we are having. So communion is not only to looking uh, backward, inward, outward, but also it's time, a communion compels us to look forward of the coming of King Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the groom, Jesus Christ. He came as humble, gentle lamb and was crucified to redeem us by his blood. But second coming, he is not timid and shy or humble, but he will come as King of kings and lion, uh, Lord of lords. As a lion, he will come again. And he will come as the bridegroom. While we are waiting for his coming, we work hard to prepare the bride of Christ, which is the church, to see the church to be ready. In Matthew 26, 29, Jesus said, I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And in verse 26 of 1 Corinthians 11, again, Paul told us, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. We will have communion to look backward and grateful, to look inward and always have self-examination and look outward to for our rich and look forward to expect his coming. And while we are expecting, waiting for him, we will prepare the bride of Christ to be beautiful, ready for him to, to come. The, mo the fastest growing part of our ministry right now is our media. Um, um, we started our media program several years back, but then it just exploded during COVID when everything was shut down and nobody could go out. Um, we were, were able to get into a lot of the closed countries through YouTube and Facebook and the countries that they've shut down Facebook. Um, I think Pastor uh, Jason shared with you that Accra are in five nations, um, Thailand being the only 
open nation, all the nations around us are closed. And so we send, we do, the, a lot of them can get on, um, on the internet, even though they're the poorest of the poorest, they all have smartphones, it's amazing. And they're able to catch a lot of what we're doing on YouTube. It's been absolutely amazing to see what's happened, especially in Laos. Um, a lot of them have um, been, been watching and then they, they contacted Jay on Messenger Facebook and a lot of them, some of them can read and write and some of them can't, but they'll record messages and they said, okay, okay, I listened to your vi video and I accepted the Lord, now what do I do? And um, we've seen them, uh, many of them come to the Lord in these closed nations and Ajay is mentoring them uh, through WhatsApp and uh, Facebook. And, but the persecution came as well. And it was very difficult because once the village found out that they accepted the Lord, they went and tore down their homes and kicked them out of the village. Uh, they've been, and so there's been uh, about five villages and about uh, 12 families that have come to the Lord that have been kicked out of their villages and they're li living on the side of the road and the Akka of Thailand came together and said, we've got to do something to help the Akka of Laos. And we've been collecting money, but it's been very difficult um, for security reasons, getting in there and helping, but we were able to buy some land and get the, a lot of them that have been displaced for several years and get them in a place. And then some of them are coming in and doing the monthly training with us as well. And what a joy. There's this very, very special young man. I can't show you a picture of him because of security reasons, but he's only 24 years old and he's risen up and he's leading this little remnant of new believers. And his faith level and how he leads them is the most humbling thing. Uh, we, he's been coming in for monthly training and we had problems with our electricity uh, during the hottest time of the year, we had all these air conditioners on during training and it would shut down. And we, we realized we had to rewire our whole facility, but it was taking a while to get the money together to do it. And there was two months that these, the, these students are there and they're sweating to death in these rooms. And we have portable microphones and we're doing the best. And I made the mistake of saying, Next month, it'll all be fixed. Um, it was very, it's going to be very expensive, and we need to fix it. This young man from Laos came up to me, and he wanted to give me a thousand baht. It's like $35. He says, this is for the electricity. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I found a church that's going to pay for it. And he said, no. He said, if I want the blessing that God's doing here at Aka Outreach, I have to be willing to sow into it. And I just wept at this young man, his faith level. There are so many young people following us uh, via YouTube and Facebook, and I have 40, 50 young people that I can talk all day long if I have time. They want to talk, ask questions, and they will talk, uh, call me, elder brother, older brother, and they asked me, how old are you? I told him my age, and regrettably. They, they started to call me grandpa. <laughs> I said, oh, hang on, slow down. You can call me pastor, but... <laughs> but uh, the Lord is moving, and this is we share to say thank you. This is a part of your fruit your involvement, your prayer, your giving, your coming visit, your sending out, and uh, make it possible for us to be there. And... Uh, I forgot. Okay. The love chain, right? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, we don't normally team teach like this. So we really try to figure out how to balance it off. Um, Ajay started uh, Love Chiang Rai. Uh, we have, right now... Um, the, the Aka used to be the least evangelized of all the tribal groups in the poorest, but now in Thailand we're 35 to 40 percent Christian. Um, but in Thailand itself, Thailand isn't even one percent Christian. 
Uh, the Thais have been very resistant to the gospel. And so now we're turning the Akka's focus onto the Thais and say that we need to begin to reach out to the Thais and evangelize the Thais. And Ajay is a prominent leader in the North. And so he said to all the churches, let's all come together and we're gonna rent a soccer stadium and we're going to have a time of praise and worship for our city. We need to reach our city for Christ. We didn't know what would happen. We'd never done a stadium event. And so we did it December 11th, and over 6,000 people came. <laughs> the worship was amazing. 80% um, of the 6,000 were Akka. And we're um, encouraging them that we need to reach out and reach to the Akka, to out to the ties. And this is difficult because the Akka have been looked down upon and persecuted by the ties um, because they were so poor and they were so dirty. And now they've gotten their dignity back. And they're saying, yes, we need to love the ties. We need to be extravagant to the ties. We need to let go of the prejudice and we need to reach out to the ties. And so we're excited to see what's going to happen with Love Chiang Rai as we continue to promote unity among all the churches and to encourage the Akka to reach out to the ties. When I was a teenager, high school, I have friends who are older, cool group. I wasn't a part of that. I, I was sad not to be a part. But you know what they do? They do a blood covenant by piercing their fingers and have a cup of water and squeeze blood and then they take to, uh, to, to drink and vow that they will be friends for life, brothers for life, and they will keep each other, they have make uh, that blood covenant. And like I was not old enough, not cool enough, I wasn't a part of that, I was sad at the time. But in looking back, I'm glad I'm not a part of that group because most of people die, disappear, and I only know one person on that group that is alive, and he's uh, brain damaged because of the drugs. drugs. But I'm grateful to God to be a part of this new covenant, blood covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that's born every tribe, tongues, nations, and people together, and it is eternal. Friends, next time you do uh, communion, you just don't do the sake of doing, but understanding the meaning, the significance of it. You know, the, I got the coin, that is a royal coin, the king of Thailand given out 70 years ago for the tribal people because they don't have the ID card. But if they have the royal coin, then they can travel all over Thailand without any kind of uh, paperwork. So the, they interviewed first to give out. And so the Akka people wanted that coin. So they dress up, Akka costume and turban and all that. And so the interview officer interview, asked name and all kinds of things. And then pre pre pretty soon the interviewers asked the Akka uh, man, the first man, saying, what happened, he take a pencil, what happened if I use this pencil to pierce into your, your eyes. He said, oh dear sir, you hurt and cannot see. Okay, what if I take the, that pencil to pierce another eyes? He said, oh dear sir, it will very, very hurt and cannot see at all. And the officer gave that royal coin and he came out. The sec second in line was you need, the, the Akka, their tie isn't very good, and the officer's trying to check to see if, how much tie they understand, and the Akka are very nervous speaking tie. Second one on the lines, asking the first one, so uh, is it hard? What, 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 what is the, the, the question, what you have to say? 
The, second, uh, uh, the first one said, you just tell your name, and the first answer, you just say, you know, oh, it, it hurt bad and cannot see. Okay, second one, you said, oh, it hurt very much and cannot see at all. So the guys memorize the answer and go in. So the officer asked name, age, and said, this time, though, the officer didn't pick up the pencil, but scissor. And the officer asked the archive man, said, what if I use this scissor to cut your ear off? He said, he answered confidently, oh, dear sir, if you hurt and cannot see. <laughs> the officer kind of puzzled and yet continued, okay, what if I use this scissor to cut another ear of yours? He said, oh, dear sir, it will be very, very hurt and I cannot see at all. The officers kind of puzzled. And then the guy, the Akha man, realized what he, what he just did. So he said, sir, sir, he pedaled back and said, sir, sir, here, do you see my turbans? If you cut my ears, if you hurt, and my turban fall and <laughs> close one eye. And if you cut another ears, my if you're very, very hurt and close my, both of my eyes and cannot see it at all. <laughs> so the officer, okay, you pass and give the royal coin. <laughs> the point is that you just don't take the answer from the other one to answer your, your own question. You just don't do communion just like other people do. Do know the wonderful meaning of communion. It's a time of looking back and be grateful to Jesus. Look inward to check your heart, have self-examination and be right with God. Look outward and have the love for the lost soul and do outreach. Start with your family, your community, your city, and your whole world. And then fourthly, you look forward with expectation and hope. And yet, while waiting, we prepare the bride of Christ to be ready for the King of kings, the Lord of Lord Jesus Christ coming. Thank you so much for giving us a time to share. Thank you, Pastor Jason. He's the best. I see the anointing of the Lord coming over him. I love his purity, his servant heart, his humility, and his courage. And his anointing is spilled over from U.S. to Thailand and Southeast Asia and all over the world. We thank you. Faith Church for your faithfulness and thank you Pastor Jason and uh, all the staff of Faith Church. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor. Come on church, let's give them a hand. Let's stand to our feet. Bless you. Brother, brother. Great job. Yes, so good. Amen, amen. If you can, lift your hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your blessing over your people. Lord, we pray that as you have blessed their ministry and their church, and they have reached the people you've called them to reach, may we also have the same anointing here, that we, in the midst of really an unreached area, God, a post-Christian state, city, that God, that you would put that same anointing on us, that we would mobilize ourselves as a local church like they have determined to reach the people in this city. God, we pray today for your anointing over each one of us, that we would answer your call. God, I pray that there are young people here today, that you are placing on them the mantle and the call of being a missionary to go over the sea, overseas to serve in Thailand to serve with Ajay Nancy. Lord, I, I know today you're calling all of us to be missionaries to, to not only go over the seas, but to walk across the street 
and share the gospel. Lord, I pray for your blessing over your people that you would prosper them, you would lead them, you would guide them, that we would leave here today encouraged of what you're doing. And God, we together as a church bless Ajay and Nancy. We bless their ministry. We bless, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do in the future. We thank you for, the, for all the things that you're going to open up in front of them for them to step into and see you do miracles through their ministry. God, we today, as we claimed this this people group here in our city and nation, we today claim the Akas as well, that they would all find you, Jesus. That you came here, God, that your heart and your mind and your spirit and will is that none would perish, but all would find salvation through you, Jesus. So Lord, today we leave here encouraged and thankful for this precious couple and what you're doing in their lives and what you're doing in ours. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen.